we can turn to this topic of what you can do um, about being an election judge or a poll watcher. And um, to serve as an election judge, you must meet the eligibility requirements in your state. And the requirements vary slightly from state to state. And there's a link to truthevote.org that connects you with election laws governing your state. You can also contact your state election authority, most often either at the state board of election or your state secretary of state's office. And, um, and then there's a link here with, with the list. Uh, in general, most states require the following to be an election judge. You need to be a U.S. citizen, be of good repute and character, and not subject to the registration requirement of Sex Offender Registration Act. You need to be able to speak, read, write, English, um, be skilled in the four fundamentals, rules of mathematics. What, what are those? Like just to be able to add and, oh, just the yes, operations, the add and divide. Up. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm like, what are those? Okay. We don't want to have more balance than people. Yes, you need to be able to add like that. <laughs> you need to be able to add and divide by people. Okay, subtract. Okay, multiply. All right. And be good at under, be of good understanding and capable, not be a candidate uh, for any office in the election, and not be an elected committee man and, um, or woman, and uh, be registered to vote in the county in which the election judge serves. So a voter in suburban Cook County may serve as an election judge either in the suburbs or in Chicago, um, but not in Peoria. Uh, complete a short election judge training session provided by an election uh, authority. So each precinct is allotted three election judge slots from one major political party and two for the, from the other. Uh, to make the day more enjoyable, it's completely permissible to request to serve with a friend or a family member as a fellow election judge or a policy circle um, member would be a great way to, to do something together. Uh, election judges are responsible for the administration of election procedures at the polling place on election day. This includes setting up the voting equipment prior to the polls opening, which happens at 6 a.m. in our state, in Illinois, and staying past the time of polls closing, 7 p.m. in Illinois, to tally the ballots and otherwise secure the voting equipment. Most election judges want to follow the law. They may be harried by long lines or overwhelmed by the great number of details involved in their duties. Politely pointing something out is often welcomed by a judge who appreciates the help. And election judges also oversee poll watchers whose numbers may vary depending on how many can be present on election day. And the election judges may limit the number of poll watchers if polling place becomes too crowded, but must allow equal party representation to remain. But this is very rare. Uh, often there's only a single poll watcher present all day. So, so tell us how easy and, you know, you've been an election judge. It's, tell us about the experience. Yes. So, um, it, you know, one common factor is that in all states there's training. And in addition to an actual training uh, experience, they'll give you a training handbook or materials. And it's very clearly set out. So anytime you have a problem on election day, you can just say, hold on and refer to your manual. So we all sort of feel intimidated, like how will I know what to do? Um, but it's all right there for you. Uh, and, and it's interesting. Um, so, you know, um, you know with, with us, um, this is sort of the ultimate citizen participation, I would say. And so it was exciting. It was exciting to be part of, of democracy, yeah. um, part of the election. Um, and, you know, it was, it was really with the instructions, it was really quite simple. I'll say the most challenging part for me, since I'm not a super technologically savvy person, um, was sort of the technology aspect of it. But the instructions there were, were really simple. Basically, you know, plug the big arrow into the yellow box, things like that, that anyone yeah, can follow. Yeah, they make it simple. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was, um, it was exciting. Uh, it was fun. It was tiring. 
Um, but I really felt like I made a big difference. And it was just one day of my life that made a big difference. Yeah, that does make a big difference. And then you said also a really good example. There's a call out box here in the in the brief that say tap your high schooler. Uh, given the shortage of adult election judges in, in some states, high school juniors and seniors, even those who are not 18, are allowed to serve as election judges if um, they have their principals and parents' permission. So this could really be something uh, a mother-daughter or a mother-son, you know, a parenting parent, um, uh, son-daughter activity um, with your child to really uh, participate in the election process. And it's something I never really considered, uh, but, you know, really something you invite everyone to to consider doing with a family member. So, Laura, do you want to talk about becoming a poll watcher? Sure. So to become a poll watcher, you'd contact the campaign or a political party of your choice regarding your willingness to serve as a poll watcher either all day or just for part of the day. The candidate or the political party usually provides a short training you know, flexible to your schedule, but so that you also would be confident going into election day that you know what you're doing. And this is especially helpful for first time poll watchers. Just like election day, bring a friend. A day of volunteering is, is much more enjoyable with a friend. Additionally, many polling places house multiple precincts. And so two friends could easily cover a few precincts this way, having a big impact, but still sort of having a friend there for the day. Now, the qualifications of poll watchers vary from state to state. Some states do not require poll watchers to be residents of the state. I mentioned I had been a poll watcher in Wisconsin, where I am not a resident. Other states require poll watchers to be a registered voter in the county in which they poll watch. Illinois is sort of in the middle. We require you to be a poll watcher in the state of Illinois, not the county. The poll watchers are responsible for observing the ballot box prior to voting, making sure it's empty at the start of the day, making sure the machines start with zero votes registered before anyone's voting, being in close proximity to the election judges in order to observe applications for ballots, observing the election judges as signatures of voters are compared, including being close enough to see the signatures, observing judges distributing and depositing ballots, observing that provisional ballots are given when required, and that voted provisional ballots are placed in the secure receptacle provided for this purpose and not fed into the ballot optical scan machine with regular ballots, or observing that election judges are requiring two pieces of acceptable identification when somebody registers to vote that day, observing counting procedures of ballots, including provisional votes after the election is over, keeping detailed records of what goes on in the polling place. These records are useful in the event of an illegal challenge. And so you want to include names and times of irregularities. Poll watchers observe the closing of the polling place. They ensure that at the time the polls close, which in Illinois is 7 p.m., the judges properly indicate the last person in line at that time and do not allow latecomers to join the line or vote. In the rare instance where a judge, uh, and this is a judge of a court, not, not, not an election judge, orders that a polling place stay open late, all ballots cast by voters who arrived after 7 p.m. or the close of polls are to be provisional ballots and are to be completely segregated even from other provisional ballots cast earlier in the day. This, of course, is because an appellate court may reverse the order of a judge. And so then those ballots would be had been kept separate. Poll watchers observe the judges tallying the ballots and electronically transmitting the results. Poll watchers can obtain a copy of the results, colloquially sort of called the tape. That's what that means, just a copy of the results. Poll watchers observe the judges properly securing the blank ballots to avert any possibility of their being improperly voted. And poll watchers record the serial numbers of the security seals the judges use to secure all voting materials. Poll watchers can politely call to the attention of the election judges any incorrect voting procedure or apparent violation by anyone in the polling place. Poll watchers can challenge for cause the voting qualifications of a person 
offering to vote. This is very rare though, that this would be appropriate, but they may not interfere with anyone's right to vote. Now, most importantly, the mere presence of a poll watcher likely averts the great majority of any illegal activity just by adding transparency to the process. As we said earlier, candidates, political parties, proponents of ballot referenda, and certain civic organizations are all permitted to have poll watchers present in polling places. This compendium from the US Election Assistance uh, Commission provides a comprehensive overview of laws in all 50 states governing poll watchers. And True the Vote also offers this resource of materials by state for all 50 states. So the, so the poll watcher is more like the observer, really. You kind of walk around, you make sure, and just by being there, it, it just really keeps everyone making sure you're, you're doing your job. And it's just human nature. So. Um, so that's, you know, that's really, so have you been a, have you been a poll watcher? Did you do that? Yes, I have. I have been a poll watcher um, many times in Illinois and, and one time in Wisconsin. And I'll say in addition to just your presence sort of averting any irregularity, one way, one particular way it does is sometimes, you know, it's a long, long day and sometimes you'll have an election judge who really wants to follow the law and other judges who are tired and just kind of want to get things done. And sort of your being there sort of reminds all the judges and gives the election judge who really wants to follow the law a little more to stand on, sort of. Everybody, it's, it's human nature. Yeah. If the public is watching, we're going to cross the T's, dot the I's, and really follow the law. Right, right. And you were saying, actually, this is where there's not a lot of uh, poll watchers in, in each of the precincts, right? Correct. Um, that, that is one role that is not filled. What about in the context of a mail-in vote, do poll watchers with the mailing, the counting of the mail-in votes would um, be divided up like in one big room in different precincts and then you still have poll watchers, you would still be able to, um, to have that role, right? Yes, yes. And so we talked a little bit earlier about the matching of the signatures is how it happens in Illinois and some other states um, yeah. before a ballot is even opened or an envelope is even opened to see if there even is a ballot inside, right? And so I've been a poll watcher there. And again, it's, it's, it's human nature um, that, you know, these are very tired people. It's now after, you know, after the election, they're, they're um, verifying these and there's, there might be stacks and stacks. But if you're just there as a poll watcher, um, you know, every voter registration is going to be pulled up. Every signature is going to be matched against the envelope. And again, it, it's, it's human nature that if you weren't there, um, you know, maybe they'd kind of just be tossed aside or, or something. Um, you know, we don't know, but we know that if we are there, it's the same, you know, sunshine is the best disinfectant. And yeah. so there's definitely a role for a poll watcher, for poll watchers yeah. with mail-in ballots. 